is the regular meeting of the Town Plan and Zoning Commission, Thursday, August 25th. Um, first item on the agenda would be the approval of minutes. Uh, item 2A, minutes of July 28th. I uh, have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. second. And second. Any additions, corrections, omissions? Oh, well, same thing. <clears throat> all right, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Minutes are approved. Uh, item 2B, minutes of August 3rd, 2022, special meeting. Uh, I have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections, omissions? I'm not hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? I'll Chair stay. votes aye. Oops, sorry. Abstain. Gotcha. Yep. One abstention. Uh, minutes are approved. All right. Item three is a petition by Judge, a public hearing that was previously opened. Uh, have a motion to take it off the table. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do anyone here representing Jolly? Uh, I don't believe so. We did get a, I'll see if anyone's in the attendee. Uh, but uh, I, we did get an email today that I circulated from Brian Zellman and uh, it says we hereby request and consent to a two week extension of the statutory time to keep the hearing open for the petition by Jolly 2 LLC for a proposed zoning regulation text amendment pertaining to the signage requirements found in section 6.3. So uh, for those in the audience that 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 uh, may not realize I just started two days ago so the commission I really haven't had a chance to prepare for this meeting and write any memos for uh, the applicants we are going to have a special meeting on September 8th which will give us uh, at least give me two weeks to familiarize myself with the files and, and then be able to write uh, some some memos for the commission. So uh, we're uh, those that want to can uh, start the hearing and uh, but there'll be no no decisions made tonight and they'll be continued to the September 8th special meeting at the same time. And we'll put out agenda probably tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I don't, let me check. Do you find anybody here? I didn't, uh... I don't know if, if anybody's here for this application. Uh, there's, uh, raise your hand. There are only four people in the attendees. Right. I don't think so. No. All right. All right. Motion to put it back on the table. <laughs> yes. It's a motion to continue it to September 8th, I think. Right. The, uh, in order. Can I have a motion to that effect, please. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll move we uh, continue the, uh, the petition by J Jolly 2 for the text amendment until September, was it the 8th? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Votes aye. It's back on the table. Now, Jose, we've got uh, five new hearings are any of them should we push them all up to september 8th mr i believe mr plant is here although i don't i don't I, you know i'm looking at the legal notice that was saved in the unless there was a unless there was a different one i don't see that that has got put in the paper but uh i know mr plant from uh kms to establish a, an auto repair facility, uh, the, the the one I have on the screen anyway, unless they can find a different one. Uh, All right, then let's go ahead with it. Would you please read the public right. legal notice? There is no legal notice that I'm saying. It, it just, I oh, don't see it. Oh. It's not on the legal notice that I have. Well, I but thought the, you meant uh, he was August okay. 25th meeting. I don't, I, you know, again, I don't, I can't respond to that if you want to, just uh, open a, uh, let the applicant. Yes, I, I can I, work out with the applicant. Uh, what, what's okay? We can insert that later, I guess. Later, but uh, 
the applicant is here. Yes, I see. All right, motion to, motion to open the public hearing. So no, moved. Second. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, chair votes aye. We're in the public hearing just for anybody who's paying attention or anyone in the audience who really cares. Uh, we'll conduct this hearing in the following manner. The applicant will make a presentation. We'll then have some comments from the town planner, possibly. Uh, we'll then have questions from the audience, questions from the commission, comments from the audience, comments from the commission, and then give the applicant one last chance to wind it up. Who's here to make this application? Uh, Mr. Plant is here, and I believe he, he can speak if he... Yeah, he's on. Yes, so, I'm here. Okay, why don't you tell us what we're doing here, Mr. Plant? I am uh, applying to open up a repair facility on 20 East Newberry Road in Bloomfield, Connecticut for cars and light trucks. Well, can you tell us a little bit more than that? Um, <laughs> what do you need to know? Actually, I don't, I'm not sure. It's a three bay garage that's already previously there. I've been told that uh, many years ago that it was already a repair facility for um, semi trucks at one point, I believe. And I'm trying to open up my own garage over there with uh, outdoor storage, uh, fenced in yard, cameras. I'm not sure what else you need. I've never done this before. I understand that. Uh, can you, uh, uh, well, maybe we'll get, we'll, we'll drag it out of here with questions <laughs> as we move okay, along. Okay, well, Mark, 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 what's Mark, Mark, uh, Mullaby, Mullaby, I can't remember his name. He, um, he applied for me and he sent you guys in the, um, the uh, drawings and, yep of the building and the parking lot and all that, all the surveying he did for it. Right. Um, what else do you need to know, to be honest with you? We'll, we'll get back to you on that. Mr. Okay. Steiner, any comments at all or? No, again, I, I, I just okay. saw the, I just yeah. saw the, the plans. Uh, I, I think, it, you know, he's correct. It's an existing building. I can probably show you where it's located. Um, can you all see that? Yep. So it's, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Plant, but this is the building and you're going to take up and you're not doing any exterior work on it, I assume? No, no, it's it's the back it's half of the building. The front half of the building is already occupied by another company. I'm what's, taking what's, this to the back half. What's the use there? And the front? The front yes. The front is um, AMSGG, Andre's Mechanical, the mechanical repair place. Okay, they so do like, a, they do plumbing and construction and stuff like that. And you would do what kind of repairs? Truck? Truck and car repairs in the back. Truck and car repairs in the back. Okay. Right. It's, it's completely fenced in in the back around it. There's a gate. There's security cameras on the side of the building. There's going right. to be um, handicap and parking for like the unrepaired cars to the left. And then to the right, there's going to be more parking where there's a hoop house to, to put the repaired cars. I just uh, well then just just Mr. Chairman I just uh, you know I'll 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 look over the file look over the plans contact Mr. Plant between now and September eighth if there's any issues I'll I'll, 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 I'll put them in my memo. I assume there'll be no new construction in terms of infrastructure. No, no, the building has already got three doors, three bays. It's already it well, has a. No, I'm talking Mr. Plant. I'm talking about exterior in terms of. Lighting and drainage, I suppose it's all in at this point. No, everything's been there forever. Yeah, we'll leave that as subject to review. All right, turning to the audience, if any, is anyone in the audience uh, have any questions for this project? Uh, let me see if there's anybody raising their hands. Ah, give me a second. I'm, I'm, I'm ready back in the panel here. Right. Um, oops. I don't. I don't see anybody's hand up. So. All right. Then move, move, moving to the commission. Let's see, Mr. Millett, do you have any questions? 
Uh, not right now. I'll, I'll wait for the memo and the staff to be able to review. Okay. Uh, get my glasses back on. It would help help quite a bit. Uh, Mr. Lester, you're next. Uh, no, not at this point. Okay, Ms. Blitt? Agree. I'll wait for the town planner's okay. memo. Mr. Oliver? Uh, no questions. Okay, and the chair has none. Uh, hey, you haven't uh, forgotten me, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I assume there are no comments from the audience. Let's just run through the commission if they want to make any comments at this point. Mr. Oliver, any comment? No, no comments. Okay, Mr. Blint. Ms. Blint. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lester. Uh, I'm all set. Mr. Millett. All set. Okay. And Mr. Eaton. You forgot me again. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Bolt, I didn't see. I, I, you're right. I jumped right by you. Sorry no about theory. that. No questions or comments at this time. Sorry. When did you come in? I didn't even notice you were coming. <laughs> One minute after seven. Okay. You're tardy, but we'll excuse you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I need a motion to uh, continue this on September 8th. So moved. Thank Second. you. Second? Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Skipping along. Special permit of Johnny Alexander. It's the same situation, Mr. Geiner. I will, I will, um, I do have a legal notice for that. So I can, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll open to read it. Here. So, uh, Notice is hereby given that the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will conduct public hearings at a meeting on August 25th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. One, special permit application of Johnny Alexander to conduct tire, retail, and automotive services at a property located at 7 Maplewood Avenue in the GWD zone, owner, prayer, and praise fellowship. Don't, oops. Trying to get back here. I don't, I'm not sure that anyone's here. I did talk to Mr. Alexander to let him know uh, that we were going to open the hearing and most likely continue it and, and that I had some questions. I, so, see th uh, I see three people. I don't know if anybody's here for that. Uh, they, uh, are. So they need to raise their hands and let me know. But otherwise, what my recommendation is that you just continue the hearing to September 8th. I have a motion to that effect. I make a motion that we continue this hearing, a special permit application of Johnny Alexander to conduct tire retail and automotive services at property located at 7 Maplewood Avenue in a GW zone, owner prayer and praise worship fellowship to our September 8th meeting, 2022. A second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay, item 3C. With a special permit. Okay. Uh, notice is hereby given the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will conduct public hearings at a meeting on August 25th. 2022 commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following um, special permit application of Kirk Cameron for approval of permanent outdoor patio lighting as it pertains to section 6.9.D.2 property located at 16 Toby Road in an I-1 zone owner 16 Toby Road LLC and if you give me a second Mr. Cameron's here I can promote the pan I can promote him to panelist and he can, <clears throat> he can talk. Okay, he should be joining us in a second. There he is, I think. You muted, Mr. Kerman. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was just trying to get, all right, here we go. Right. Okay, Hi. The, 
Yeah, the, uh, the, the permit that we are uh, requesting is really just for string lights above our patio. Um, they're LED string lights. They are about 50, they give off about 50 lumens a piece. Um, you know, candidly, they've been up for a while. So um, we had a complaint by a neighbor who uh, sort of created the need for us to go for a special permit on these lights. So um, that's what I'm here for. All right, any comments, Mr. Geiner? You have anything in the file? Or no, I know that I, th I think we, we had a couple, Mr. I think uh, Mr. Kaplan, who's a neighbor across the street is here, so. Right, I see him, yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't know if the other gentleman's here for it, but uh, any in any case, I, again, I, I just spoke briefly with uh, uh, Mr. Cameron this afternoon, um, and just coming up to speed on on what what, what this was all about. So I, I think in, in two weeks we should be all set. I should be able to write you a memo with appropriate uh, conditions uh, being recommended. Okay. Uh, we'll turn to questions from the audience, Mr. Kaplan. Uh, Hang on I a second. Let me let me. I, let hear me you. Get. I assume you're here for that. Yep. Um, Okay, it's allowed to talk. Any questions, you, Mr. Kaplan? Hi, can you hear me and see me? Yes, we, can, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I wish I knew how to handle that one, but um, let me just see if I could figure that out. I don't know. Well, well hang on a second. You know why? Because I'll promote you to panelist. I think then we'll be able to see it. Okay. Hang on a second. I think. Okay, you have to mute yourself. Okay. I still I can't see it, but whatever. <laughs> oh, hey, here it is. I got it. There you go. Oh, there, there I am. Hello. I'm the I'm the aforesaid neighbor, Mr. Cameron was referring to, irrespective of the fact that. Um, he has had those lights up for a long time. Mr. It, Kaplan, Mr. Kaplan, before you proceed, yes, questions only at this point. Oh, I have a lot of questions. The application references 12-14, um, Toby Road, and 16 Toby Road. There is no patio at 12 and 14 Toby Road. I'm wondering if you could clarify where the patio is. Um, I'm looking at the application right now and it does not list 1214 Toby Road. It says location of site 16 Toby Road. So I think you must have an incorrect document. So actually I'm looking at the application as well. There's, there's, there's oh, I see maybe to clarify that there's two applications pending. Oh uh, yeah, I see that. Um, the, the legal note, the legal notice right now is for this hearing is for 16 Toby Road. The other one is a site plan application, I believe. I think what uh, I think Mr. That, that, that is not on tonight's agenda. And and uh, I think there's another application. Uh, I think what he's referring to is the conflict of interest form, and I think that was incorrectly filled out. It's just, right. And I and I think that that's because Mr. Kaplan has filed a number of complaints against us and. I think we filled out one conflict of interest disclosure form to deal with all of them. I think I think that's misrepresentation, and, and I have and will continue to file uh, objections to Mr. Cameron's overuse, overdevelopment of the site without adequate parking. But that's for another matter. This is an application with regards to the lights and, and only and at lights only at 16 Toby Road, right? Has nothing to do with 14, 12 or 14. Can someone clarify that? That's, what the, that's what the application is for, 16 Toby Road. Okay. The any, further, any further questions? Yes, I have many questions, sir. The application includes a picture of 14 Toby Road, as well as outside dining in an area which is not on a patio. So this is my question. So, you know, yes or no. Does this application only limited 
M216 LB Road. That's, that's what my agenda says. I'm looking at the application. It says 14 to 16 Toby Road. So which one is it? It's 16 Toby Road. That's not what the application says, though. It says 14 to 16. Maybe you got sent the, the wrong one. No, yeah. I, 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 Again, I, I wasn't yeah, around. You know what I got out. sent. <laughs> but it's 16. There, there is two files, and that may be created the confusion. There's a file for 16 Toby Road. And there's a file for 14. Up to 14. So that that might have that might have again. We're going to continue this to the eighth. So sure. uh, I'll, I'll I'll be able to clarify that hopefully. Thank you. Okay, because that was my question. That was one of my questions that needs to be clarified. There is no patio at twelve fourteen Toby Road. Oh, there right. the patio. What, at what, Mr. Kaplan? Questions only. Uh, okay, I have another question. I'd like to know. Um, if there are any violations currently against that property that need to be straightened out before uh, your committee can take any action. Well, it would be my thought that if there are any violations that don't pertain to this particular subject, they're not germane to the discussion and they have sure. to be handled separately. Respectfully, I'm not sure that is accurate, but Jose can look at that. I think there's some implications with regards to why those lights are necessary. Why are those lights necessary, Mr. Cameron? That's my question. To shed light on our patio. And that is, is that a legal patio with, what are you gonna be doing on the patio? There is dining and people congregating on the patio. You know how many people, for instance? It would depend on the evening. So you have tables and chairs? That is correct. And you'll have people standing. Sorry, what was that question? And will he have people standing on the patio in addition to tables and chairs? I would assume that they would be standing while walking to tables as opposed to crawling or whatever. So yes, I would say that at, at one point or another would be standing on our patio. Standing and standing and drinking and eating and all that stuff, not just walking to tables, right? No, people, people don't really stand on the patio to drink. No, they don't. Well, they sit at a table. Well, I have noticed that they actually do. So I, I just like to reflect that. What is the inside of the building presently? How is that used? I'm, I'm sorry, are we talking about patio lights or the inside of our building? Right? About, uh, sir, we're talking about occupancy load and exit egress. Mr. Kaplan, again, park, again. And parking, and parking requirements. How many people do you occupy? How many people are allowed occupancy on that patio currently? That would be a decision of the fire marshal, I believe. No, because there is no, uh, sir, it is re respectfully, Mr. Burson, it's in the purview of your commission. It's in the zoning regs, it's in the building code. How many people occupy your space, sir? You should have a poster. It, it probably posted somewhere, what's allowed? The actual interior occupancy is real, I do not believe comes under our uh, jurisdiction. What we would have to know, obviously, is how many people are in there. So, Jose, the parking is based on the area, not the occupancy, right? Yeah, I mean, again, you know, you're dealing with an application for lighting. If there's an issue with occupancies and, and, and parking, then we need to have a discussion outside of this. This hearing's limited to. The, the lighting. Um, okay. well, I, I know. I know the legislature, and, and again, I apologize because I haven't had a chance to familiarize myself with this application. But the legislature uh, did uh, provide for some expedited and, and easing of rules regarding outside patios during the COVID crisis. So I, I, I don't know what the, you know. I haven't kept up to the status of that. Is I know they expire sometime. I believe in April, and I and I would have to find out exactly what what 
how it pertains to this this particular application. I think, I think, I think that's a, the that's application a, in the hearing is, is limited to the lights. We're not here to discuss whether or not the uh, there is a uh, uh, the occupancy is correct or not. The lights have absolutely no, in my mind, uh, it's not germane to the to the to, to the hearing. Okay, as long as you're open to further discussion on that matter, I, I yeah, I, I, I certainly will. And 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 and, and again, so if, I'll if just you believe there's violations or anything like that. Uh, you know, there's case law that says you got to take an application for its on its face to see whether or not it it complies, and you have enforcement measures in the statutes that you need to go after if if, if there is any, any kind of. Uh, uh, of a violation that you that you allege, but uh, again, you can't hold up an application that otherwise meets the regulations because then there is a, uh, a violation on the property. That's that was okay. that's been tried in the Connecticut courts, and, 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 and uh, I don't have an issue on that. On that kind yeah. of so so if you want if you want to pursue it with our with our zoning officer and uh, and, and I, I have and I have and and, and, her, and her I'd be happy to meet with you and and you can. It'd be would be helpful if you could put it in writing what 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 you believe is in violation. Uh, and I have done that. Can Jose, that. Respectfully, okay. Jose, I did that for you, with your for your predecessor and for me, so they're all aware okay. of the situation. But moving on with regards to the light specifically, uh, does this light going to have cutoffs as every other building site plan requires, so that it doesn't the lighting doesn't flow off property, uh, causing potential uh, glare and uh, obstructions. These are these are LED Edison bulbs. Yes, that give off fifty lumens of light, mm -hmm. and I do not believe that the that first off, I, I think what you're asking for is shields on each bulb as it hangs over the patio. Especially because they're a hazard for life and safety issue. You know, somebody can knock it with a with the tray as they're walking by. You know, those types of lights are generally caged, at least caged. But my question, more specifically, Kurt, is what limits their capacity to glare off the site? Every site plan, every municipality that I've ever worked with as an architect. One of the main issues is limiting your illumination to your own property. How are these globe lights, which I think we all know what a globe light is. It's an app, it's a, it's a round light, LED or not LED. What limits their output? I understand the amount of lumens. I'm not sure the lumens meet your requirement for task lighting as you described it. In fact, I think you should probably represent somewhere that that's sufficient for task lighting to satisfy your need. But, so that's the one question. The other question is what specifically about these lights are designed to keep them from sourcing over your property? Like this commission probably knows one of the first things you always ask for in a site plan approval is how is, how is the uh, applicant limiting the- Mr. Light? Kaplan, you're correct, but it's usually when we're talking about a uh, high rise light Absolutely not. I, I am, lighting. No, I am an architect in the state of Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, and Texas. And in all four states, and in fact, in your own in your own code, it's one of the requirements. <laughs> I'd be happy to read the, the requirements. Yes, uh, and again, you code. again you're talking about exterior lighting that's no, primarily be, for parking. No, we're not no, I'm not. I'm talking about light for signs. I'm talking illumination for walkways. He's got light on number 14 that I, as far as I know, don't have a permit to ask, maybe they do, that shine into the street, causing my tenants uh, a, a objectionable glare. I've received comments from my tenants about why can't I do something about the lights that are glaring onto the roadway okay. after hours. I'm gonna like to, Mr. Kaplan, we're getting away from questions again. No, that is a question. How is his I, light? I, I heard no question in there. Other How is his light? Comments. Okay, here's the question, sir. Respectfully. How is this light fixture deter the illumination of its glare offside? This particular fixture that you proposed. 
Mr. Cameron? Um, uh, what I would say is there, there's string lights. They do not create glare that is any way. It doesn't inhibit people from driving down the street. It doesn't bother. It, it bothers Mr. Kaplan for some reason. I don't know yes, why. because it's illegal and you are, you are bound by the same obligations as every other tenant or every other citizen in the town, including myself. This is from Newhouse. They manufacture your fixture. Okay, I spoke to their technical department and there is no way that those lights can be limited to uh, on-site glit or illumination only. So if you can, there are other fixtures that you can use. You need to find those. This is not about that as the only option fixture. So this is, um, if I can just kind of make a comment to the commission. This is the kind of harassment I've been putting up with now for six months for Mr. Kaplan. In addition to him accosting our customers as they come into our location, I really don't think Mr. Kaplan's issue is the amount of glare coming off a 50 lumen uh, Edison bulb hanging on a string light. This has got larger. Yes, it's life. Oh, it's yeah, my no. obligation, sir. I'm an architect. Life, safety, and the welfare of the general public, just like this commission has, okay? You are asking for a special permit, not just a permit. Mr. Kaplan, please. We okay. don't need the oratory at this point in this hearing. Well, he, he derives my comment. So anyway, here's, I'm going to take a minute and then ask my question, if that's okay, Mr. Permit person. You have another question? Yes, the code for outdoor lighting says, Exterior lights and sign illumination shall be designed, located, installed, and directed in such a manner as to prevent direct glare or light trespass to be confined within a target area. Direct so directly directed towards the property, uh, not no externally mounted direct light source directed towards the property line shall be visible at the property line at ground level or above. I don't want to go through your criteria because you know your criteria. There are, there are um, 11 of them, including fixtures that are permittable, of which this is not one of them. And finally, the special permit allows you the discretion for temporary lights. He's okay. proposing- Okay, again, Mr. Kaplan. Are these permanent lights or temporary lights, Kurt? I'm sorry, Steve, what was your question? Are these permanent lights, Kurt, or temporary lights, Kurt? Um, the lights directly over the patio are permanent, or we'd like them to be. And and guys, if, if I could just, oh, well, go ahead, Steve, finish, finish your, finish your- uh, No, I, I'm letting you respond, go ahead. So the reason that we're the reason we're applying for a special permit to the commission is, if you look at section, um, I, I think I believe it's six point ten a. The purpose of this entire section of the zoning code is to intended to aid applicants in ensuring that the designs are in harmony with the character of the community, and encourage high quality building and the site design, and. String lights over a, a commercial dining patio. We're not setting any any precedent here, right? I mean, you see them everywhere. You see them in a number of other locations around town. Um, they're not egregious. They don't cause light leak or uh, you know things like that. And the commission has, you know, by special permit, allow lighting that does not comply. It doesn't say anything about temporary. It can be permanent lighting as well if they determine that such proposed lighting is consistent with the intent purpose of the regulation. So I would certainly invite the entire commission to come out and look at my string lights over my patio to see if you find them egregious, a public hazard, a whatever else Mr. Kaplan has sort of depicted of these heinous uh, string lights. I didn't say they were heinous, sir. I just said that they were not permissible in that zone. They have nothing to do with the character. Okay. 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 Please. Do you feel like on that road, they have they relate to the character are compatible with the industrial uses along that street. There are no other string lights along that street. There are no other string lights on this on Granby Street. Uh, yeah, Granby Street, which is another industrial uh, road. Do you think that is a consistency, sir? 
What do you want, Steve? You want me to take my string lights down? Is that what this is all about? No, I want you to be as responsible to the community as everyone else in the community is. That's okay. all. That's all well, this that's is an about. Interesting, that's an interesting. That's an interesting. All this is about. Witness. I have. To, okay, I gentlemen, have, gentlemen, please. I don't even know what to say to this. Okay. Well, I understand, Mr. Kaplan. Yes, sir. Any further questions? Yes, I do have further questions. I would like him to provide the photometrics for that poll. That's not a question, sir. Okay. I request, can I, re may I, may the committee request the photometrics and specifications of that bulb, a photometric being what you also require as uh, for any project, the, the, the spread of the light showing the number of lights as well. If you re this is required for every project. That would, if, if necessary, during site plan review, by planning, building, uh, fire marshal, whoever else may get interested in, that's their function. No, I'm sorry. This is the, this is the purview of this commission. This is the question. It's our decision, but they report to us. They do the study. We certainly don't do the study, Mr. Cap. Of course not. Will the study be done before the next? I'm sure that Mr. Geiner will have that under control. Okay, thank you. I also have a, some other questions. Um, what does the code require with regards to, with regards to the uh, task that you've described? I don't understand that question. What are the lumens that are produced by the lighting, which would the, which the code would require for that type of task. You describe dining, eating at tables, standing, having whatever. At that height, whatever height your tables are, that's the light, that's the surface that needs to be lit. What is the minimum requirement, lighting required by the loading, lighting code for the task that you need to seek these fixtures for? I, I would probably think that that's not in our building code. Yeah, you'd be wrong, sir. And Jose could probably be Okay, yeah, I, I wrote that down. I, I, I'm not sure, again, I, I'm not I'm not sure, but I, I'll certainly look at that. And, uh, I'm sure we go and, and see what kind of requirements we have for these type of light. I'm not even sure we have any requirements for decorative lighting. I'm not. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm almost positive. And it, it, there may be something buried in the AIE uh, yeah, five uh, lines. That's about the only place you I'll have to review the I I have to review the regulations to see awesome. what. Any other questions, Mr. Yes, Kemp? I just as a heads up, it's in the standard as well. Uh, the other question is, Kurt, uh, is there another lamp that could satisfy your needs and meet the requirements of the standards of the building of the uh, zoning regulation, or have you not looked? I don't know, Steve. If, can I recommend that that would be something the town could ask the, the applicant to, to look into? I, I, would withhold, I would withhold any recommendations by the commission at this point okay. until we see, as you've mentioned, a lighting dispersal chart. And I can't imagine that a 50 lumen light at the building is going to affect anything in the road. But we'll wait and see what that spread shows. Anything else, Mr. Kaplan? Yes, sir. How many bulbs are proposed? Mr. Kaplan? Yeah, I'll how many them. bulbs are proposed? Uh, uh, we heard I, that. I'll, I'll count them for you, Steve. Okay. I, I'm and sure I, you already have, but I, I will count them again. Uh, I, I have. Uh, I have. Uh, are those lights uh, multiple strings? How long a string is a light? Uh, are those? Do those come in? I don't, I don't see I'll, where that's... I'll oh, measure well, them for you, Steve. No, what I'm getting at, uh, Chairman, is that there's a code with, with regards to the number of string lights that can be attached before there's uh, electrical issues. Well, so, the electrical issues would be the function of the building department and our electrical inspector. Yes. And, and, and they I would, would report to us, and I don't see... I would assume that Mr. Cameron is a layman in that area. And any answer that he might give, I don't think would be germane to that particular regulation. Okay, but you've spoken to the building inspector about that issue, Kurt? That would be a function of review when Mr. Guy gets the plans. I 
So, uh, is the question, has the building inspector been in touch with you for, with regards to that issue? I don't know, and I'm sure Mr. Geiner doesn't know. Oh, I was and, addressing it to Kurt, but okay. I don't think that Mr. Cameron would be aware of how we process the plans once they were received. Well, then and the answer, we, and then we the would answer notify him, and we wouldn't notify you. And the it's answer an internal, is it's an internal system, and they report to us on their findings. Okay. Okay, so the town has criteria in the standards. They a applicant can't just say, "I want to do this." So maybe on next meeting you could present how your this well addresses the standards that are I started to read from, but are listed in the code. Because this well is not, it's not for me or the committee to tell you find an alternate well, but this well is not the be all or die all. There are Mr. Well, Kaplan, you're, the you're dissembling again. You have the floor for questions, not for lectures. Can Mr. Can, can the applicant provide a written response in advance of next meeting as to how is this proposed Edison bowl addresses or fails to address the standard in the if the, if the, st if the staff requires that information during their examination and review of the plans, they will contact Mr. Cameron. Okay, I can I can also write to Mr. Geiner. I presume with some of my concerns, I don't want to hold you guys up any further. I appreciate the opportunity to speak, not as a, not as a, 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 an aggressive uh, neighbor, but as an applicant and a taxpayer, as everyone in the town who has to go before. Again, you you thank you, Barry. Questions, thank, you Barry. thank you, Barry. Appreciate it. Any questions from the commission? Let's start with Mr. Bolton. <laughs> uh, questions or comments? Um, I'm questions. We're, we're questions. Mr. Captain likes comments. I think, I think at questions. this point, limited questions, comments. To, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of questions going to be answered. We can do the comments at the next hearing. That's a good That's idea. Okay with I mean, you, Mr. Chairman. We've got a lot of questions. Those they haven't had a chance to, to, to look at this with staff and I'm, I'm going to hold off on any questions until the 8th. Okay. So, Ms. Blint. I agree. It seems uh, that the tenor of this conversation needs to come down and we need yep. some more facts. Mr. Lester. Yes, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to hold off till we get more information. Mr. Millett. Thank you. Same. I'll, I'll wait till next. Okay, Mr. Oliver. Questions? Sorry, we'll just wait till next meeting. Thank you. Very good. The chair will also wait until the next meeting. We have a motion to continue this hearing to the next meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and, second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Chair, any ob <coughs> objections? Chair votes aye. Let's move on to the next item. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Uh, the next item, uh, uh, which is 4D, has already been requested to table to the September 22nd meeting. We need a, a mo I don't know, Jose, should we open it and then table it or mm. just move it along? I think we just move it along. Does that affect the clock in any way? What do you think of him is If it's been legal notice, I think you need to open open it well September 22nd um if you open it yeah it, you can weeks. open it and it'll, it'll still be within the 35 days so you can open it and continue it that way we don't have to legal notice it again okay do you, do you have a save legal ourselves notice? some money <laughs> do you have a legal notice to read yes I do please Notice is hereby given the Town Plan and Zoning Commission will conduct public hearings at a meeting on August 25th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Uh, site plan modification approval for 90 units of single family rental residences. Property located at 21 and 30 Rightfield Hollow Drive in an R30 slash PLR zone, owner Maulucci Brothers, LLC. Okay. All right, as we have discussed outside the range of this public hearing. There's been a request to table to the September 22nd meeting. 
Can I have a motion to that effect, please? So moved. I'll second it. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Chair votes aye. We'll be in our next regular meeting. All right, we have a site. Let me get my tongue back in place. Site plan application, step above child care, 421 Cottage Grove Road. Uh, is there someone here to, uh, Jose, what can you tell us about this, anything? Yeah, I, sp I spoke to the applicants. They have they have representation and uh, uh, they, they decide, they, they asked to be held over to the September 8th. Uh, th this is basically a daycare center. It's gonna go where the urgent care was at Capaco Plaza behind uh, the Boston oh, yeah. Chicken, yep. all that. And they're being represented, I think, believe by Peter Alter and Robin Pearson. Uh, and I did speak with uh, Mr. Alter this afternoon, and he basically said he didn't want to spend the client's money by showing up, and uh, we'd be happy to be at the eight, September 8th meeting. Okay, uh, a motion to that effect? That's, just, that's, that's not a hearing, so you just have to... Oh, that's, yeah, okay, yeah. It's not a hearing. We'll yeah, just we'll just move it Carry it over right. to the next meeting. Right, I, I was in my hearing mode. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving along. Uh, old business. Uh, what's happened in the past two days? <laughs> How much I see there's an affordable housing plan discussion, and I don't know if, if uh, town manager Hawthorne can can fill fill us in on where that stands because I haven't had a chance to ask the, the, anyone about that. I was yes. planning a meeting with uh, Goldman in York, which I believe is doing the study. So, good evening, Mr. Hawthorne. Can you enlighten us? Afternoon, everyone, and um, isn't it great to have Jose back during these um, uh, uh, the transitional times? I'm very, very thankful um, I was able to reach out to him while he was um, he was in Europe, and certainly saved the day. So I'm uh, eternally appreciative that. Um, He's here to help us out. Just good. had a wave of Red Sox hat in front of him. He would have come back. <laughs> I don't know about this year. I might, I might be putting a bag over my head <laughs> when I go to Fenway Park. I just we actually we actually uh, have engaged a couple of consultants uh, that, of course, um, this uh, commission will be very very involved with um, affordable housing plan. I don't have the most uh, recent update but i'll tell you what i what i know we have um engaged uh, goldman new york they were one of two firms who uh, submitted and the second firm ended up um declining now our affordable housing uh, plan which is required uh, by the state um and i it was funded through a grant that of course uh, jose would have been uh, instrumental in, in making that that happen uh, we were given an extension, but uh, as I understand it, most communities in, in Connecticut are in the in the same uh, boat as far as being behind and needing uh, an extension. So we have been granted uh, an extension. Uh, but yes, we have we have engaged um, Goldman York, uh, Don Poland. I don't know if you've had a chance to uh, meet that particular uh, staff uh, partner uh, with Goldman York. Uh, is handling it. Uh, there are a lot of uh, research issues to take place, but we'll be able to give you a more um, full update on exactly uh, where they are um, by the time of your, your next, at least regular meeting. I know you'll have some <clears throat> catch up to do on some of the items that you've, um, you've uh, uh, paused until uh, September 8th. Uh, the, the the other consultant that we have engaged, but we are at the very preliminary of stages. I don't even know if the contract has been signed, but for the plan of conservation and, and development. And as I had spoken to you before, that will be a joint initiative uh, as uh, facilitated through uh, the town plan and, and, and zoning uh, commission, uh, but also uh, the strategic visioning 
plan that uh, the town council will um, will uh, be very uh, involved in. Uh, so one consultant will facilitate both of those. I think it will be important to get both consultants um, introduced to you, both for the affordable housing plan, uh, as well as the plan of conservation and development, hopefully at your next regular meeting, I'm planning uh, the same thing for uh, those two important initiatives for the town council as well that will come up uh, at their second September meeting. Um, it will be important for us to uh, proceed quickly. Uh, I'll certainly be looking um, to probably the chair of the, of the commission as we did before to help us in the, um, in the recruitment process and screening for uh, the building and building and land use director. I had to tell Jose um, when we met uh, this past Monday uh, that we had changed the name of his department uh, officially. Um, th that department, which has had all types of names or at least uh, references, you know, planning and zoning, planning and economic development, um, but it had never been codified according to the requirement of the, of the town charter. Uh, and so building and land use along with um, uh, codification of other departments were put in place. Um, so there's a lot ahead. It will be important to get, um, particularly for the plan of conservation and development, Jose will certainly help us to, um, uh, to facilitate uh, in this interim period, but getting uh, that position filled um, um, for what will probably be a nearly two year long process will be uh, important. Uh, you're probably also aware um, that, you know, one of the issues, and I think even with um, uh, Jose, I don't want to put words in his, in his mouth, um, uh, retiring when he did, um, and even to some extent, the transition to Jennifer, um, this department uh, simply hasn't had the, um, the staff resources that it has needed for everything that's on its plate and is more important. Uh, of a job is, um, is needed in so many different disciplines from planning to zoning, to economic development, uh, to housing, uh, there's any of a number of issues. Housing is such an important issue uh, these days with everything that's going on in the economy. So there are uh, three new positions that Jose is going to assist us in, um, in making a priority um, administrative support uh, position, which was his highest priority in the budget um, we have gone through a process of evaluating uh, and, and, and actually um, naming a, <clears throat> a second of the three positions as the assistant director. Um, you know, my assessment from the time that I've been here was, <clears throat> I think Jose uh, put all of his divisions and other resources um, with their particular disciplines that needed to be accounted for uh, first um, and, you know, for the years that he was here for these very important um, disciplines, particularly uh, planning, but anything else that you want to mention, housing, economic development, of course, we've got a consultant that we use in some of these things, uh, but he has never had uh, sufficient support, administrative support wise or administration wise. Uh, so those are two of the three positions that will directly support uh, the director position. And then the third position that we have filled already uh, because it was an in-house uh, promotion is a deputy uh, building official. Um, so there's a lot on, on Jose's plate. Uh, we'll get you more fully up to date with some of the um, consulting efforts uh, that, are, that are going on. But one thing that I've um, made clear to Jose is, you know, um, I don't want him to be um, overwhelmed uh, as he was for so many, so many years. And um, so whatever resources that he needs temporarily, um, I've assured him that um, I will support it and, and make sure that he gets all of the help that he, that he needs. Uh, so just bear with us as we um, kind of work through um, this period of transition, but I just couldn't be more pleased and relieved that um, 
uh, he was willing to come back and, and help us through. And as you know, he'll, he'll certainly be prepared to having another couple of weeks uh, to prepare as opposed to a couple of days uh, from a long trip and tiring trip back from, from Europe. But thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, again, it's, it's two o'clock Spanish time. So my body's been a little, after 30 days, it's taken a little longer than normal to get to get back to you used to my time, to the time zone. At the, around this time of night, actually I'm pretty wide awake. Just, just change the hands on your watch. That's Mr. Right. Hoffman, <laughs> as long as we have you here, uh, we had had some preliminary discussions with Jennifer uh, towards making progress on our 10-year plan of development. Uh, was anything done in terms of looking for a consultant for that? Uh... Yes, the consultant consultant has been been hired. I have not. Um, I have not. Nancy is out this week because I wanted to be able to give Jose a more thorough update. Okay. You know, when we go when we go through a selection process, she has to get uh, the contract in place and uh, everything signed off. We have made a decision. I'm very pleased with the um, with the selection, um, but I'm not sure if we if we um, uh, signed on the on the dotted line yet. If not, that will take place uh, the first thing next week after Nancy uh, gets back. And again, we'll 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 we'll, we'll introduce them to you. Um, hopefully, Jose can put it on your next regular meeting agenda uh, for us to uh, present those consultants to you and, and what the, what the preliminary plan looks like. Yeah, I don't I don't think the state will shut us down, but I think we are already late. I'm not mistaken. We are. Uh, it, it, uh, expired, to, it expired. It yeah, expired this yeah. this month. Yeah, that's right. Okay. But, but we're also getting the necessary waivers, like for grants and those. Right. Things. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Very welcome. welcome. Okay. At this point, I think we've reached the end of the long trail. <laughs> um, unless anyone has anything they'd like to bring up, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I do have one thing, Chairman. Certainly. Person. Um, I was contacted by a local Bloomfield resident about the Connecticut Public Act 21-29. And it's a statute regarding accessory apartments. And I contacted um, Jose and Jennifer about it. And I, I know that Jose responded. I just wanted for the record um, to ask whether or not there's any action the town needs to take on it um, in response to the resident's question. We and, have within our zoning regulations provision for in-law apartments, which is essentially okay. what you're talking about. Yes. They're, they're allowed to create them. And when, when the need ceases, the department has to be department. The apartment has to be uh, eliminated. Or, and I guess that just means taking out a stove and maybe a toilet or something. But it has yes. to be referred to. Uh, and piping. We, but I'm not sure what the statute actually includes. I, I think we have to take action. Do we? As a town to either opt out or not opt out. Um, what's the, what's the statutes the, uh, have specific standards that apply if you don't opt out. Our regulations currently allow accessory apartments. We also allow, which a lot of towns don't allow, is uh, set two families by as of right, just by zoning permit in, 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 in our uh, certain single family zones. So uh, I think we're one up on a lot of towns in, 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 with that respect and in, in, in allowing and I don't know why anybody would go through the accessory apartment route, which requires a special permit, uh, if they if they live if they have a house in one of those uh, zones that allow it as of right. I would just apply just for you zoning might officer, to move in. Apply yeah. for a zoning off, just like the ones. Well, well I'm privileged to drive, for instance. Right. right. Oh yeah. So, yeah. So the, that was a that that's a zone where it was approved as a subdivision, but once it's approved as a subdivision. Uh, Two families are allowed as of right, so they were able to come in and just either, you know, at their choosing, either build single family or two family, and they, they chose to turn it into a two family 
Right. Um, so, so we do we do have some regulations that that, that sort of uh, uh, you know help, help out uh, create additional housing options for people in town. But I I will look at PA twenty one twenty nine and see if we have to formally do anything. So a lot of towns are opting out because they feel that you know they they've done something or they they want to write their own regulations and they don't want to have to go by what the state is is is, is putting down. So I I'm, I'm not that familiar with it, but I will. Uh, I will look at it, and if we, if, if either the council, I don't know if it's the council that has to take action or the commission. I would assume it's the commission. Um, I will put it on an agenda for 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 discussion and action, possibly. Thank you. What so was much. the number again? PA twenty one dash twenty nine. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll, I'll get you all copies of that. Thank you. Hey, again, entertain a motion to adjourn. I moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Bolton had his hand up first so he can leave. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually he was the last one in. He should be the first one out. Right. So we're 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 adjourned, right? Yes, yes sir. See you guys on the eighth. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good, good, good night, good night. All. Thank you all. See you in two weeks. Good to see you, Jose. Great to see you. Good to be back. <laughs>